So pumped that you're here. My name is Aaron Burke. I'm the lead pastor. We are joined together right now with all six of our campuses. And I just want to give them a shout out. Our brand and location. We love what God's doing there. North Tampa, I was with you guys last week. And I love the growth and the health of that campus. St. Pete, didn't Pastor Kenton do a great job last week? We love our St. Pete campus and our Heights campus. We love what God's doing there. Online, drop some love in the chat. Make sure you share this message. We love you guys and hearing reports about what God's doing. And South Tampa, full room, looking great today. Good to see you guys at church. And we are closing out a series that we have been doing the last four weeks called Living Large. So if you got those notes, I want you to take them out today as we dive into the finale of this series. And the idea behind it is from a book, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 21, 24. And it says it like this, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. I want you to say those two words out loud. It gets what? And and man, I want your world to get big. I want you to make a big impact with your life. And we only got one of these to live. And so I want you to make a big impact. But it says also, in contrast, the world of the stingy gets what? smaller and smaller. So we're doing our part to walk in generosity during this season. One of the things that we're doing is on your way out today, you're going to be getting given a card that looks something like this. It just basically says something special for you. And it's a card that you give people when you walk in generosity. So if you're at a restaurant and you were going to give an average tip, give, a, give, a, give a, a, an extra tip to, to the waitress or the waiter. People need that during this time. And when you do that, just drop that card there. And on the back of it has information about the church and how people can see the love of God through the people at Radiant Church. So you're at Starbucks, pay for the cart behind you, give it to the barista there and let them give them the card. And, and it's just a way that we can just let this world who is so dark right now, just see the love of God through the church of Jesus Christ. So I'm excited about us walking in generosity during this season. And this is what this, this, this message has been about, about living a large life. And so I'm going to close it out today with a passage from the book of 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bible, I want you to open up there. If you have a digital Bible, I want you to find it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul is writing to a church that's in Corinth, and he's telling them about this group of churches that walked in radical generosity. And really, it's an inspiration for all of us when we hear this passage, because it could have been written today. With all the trials that are going on, it would be the natural tendency for all of us to pull back. But during a season of trial, this church was celebrated because they walked in overwhelming generosity. And when I read this passage, I'm reminded going, this is the call of Radiant Church and it's the call of your life. I want to read the passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It says it like this. And now, brothers and sisters, we want you to know that the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches, this is the churches that we're talking about. What happened with these Macedonian churches? It says it like this in verse 2. In the midst of a very severe trial, now, if we, this was being written today, it would be, I'm going to talk to you about the grace that God has given Radiant Church. Radiant Church, talking about you. In the midst of the 2020 and 2021, 2022, 2023 pandemic, <laughs> I'm not claiming that, during all these trials, here's the result. I want you to see their reaction during severe trial. And if you're in trial today, I want you to know you don't have to act the way the rest of the world is acting right now. We don't have to be chaotic and chaos and under fear like the rest of the world is. No, what is their response? Overwhelming joy. Let me look at that camera right now at every campus. Look at me, up at me and I want you to see this. You can have joy in the midst of the trial you're in. No matter what is going on around you, you can have joy within you because we know we've read the end of the book. Our God wins this thing. We have an eternity in heaven to look forward to. Come on, give them a little bit of praise today. They had overwhelming joy and their extreme poverty and their lack. I know, I know you're struggling. I know this isn't a season of abundance for people right now. But it welled up in rich generosity. How in the world? In their lack were they able to be generous? For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. How can we do beyond our ability? I'll show you how. Entirely on their own. So they weren't coerced. They're not in a guilt trip. They're not watching sappy videos of dogs and going, okay, I guess I'll give to that thing right now. 
No, 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 no. They made a decision on their own. That's why when we do our legacy offering, we don't tell you what to give. We unashamedly ask you to ask God. And we tell you like six weeks in advance because we don't want to ever be a church that is, is even gets close to manipulation. We want to stay so far ahead of it. We want to say, we're so far away from it. We're going, no, no, this is, a, this is your decision. You pray, you hear from God. And that's what this church did. They did it on their own. And they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service of the Lord's people. Like, I loved our church. Our church is like this. Aaron, how can we do more? Who can we help during this time? Who, how, who can we reach out to? Yourself? How can we make a bigger impact? That's what this Macedonian church did. Verse 5, and they exceeded our expectations. I'm proud to say that I am so honored to be at a church that for eight years now, every time we put a goal out, you've exceeded the expectations. Every time we wanted to do something, God's blown our minds through your generosity. That's the kind of church that we are. They gave for themselves, first of all, look at this, to the Lord. The first sacrifice you make is not to your church, it's to the Lord. It's, I'm, I've not laid down, my life is not laid down for Radiant. My life is laid down for Jesus. I belong to him and him first. So everybody's like, well, Radiant changed my life. No, Jesus changed your life. We're committed to him. Can I hear a better amen than that? But we, we make a decision. We lay down, first of all, our lives to the Lord, and then, by the will of God, also to us. So there is a component to that, that we sacrificed our lives to the Lord, and then we go, now we belong to God's people. We're in this thing together. And then it says like this, so we urge Titus, just as he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. Verse 7, look at this. But since you excel in everything, oh man, this could be written about us. In faith, in speech, wow, good preaching. I, it says it right there, all right? <laughs> In knowledge, if it was written about you guys, it would say, in good looks, come on, somebody, in physical fitness. Before last week, you were doing so good. You were excelling in this. In complete earnestness and in love, we have kindled in you. But see also, and here's the key verse, ready? You excel in so many areas of your life. Now he says this, ready? See also that you excel in this grace of giving. All right, I want you to say those three words out loud with me. Right? Excel in this what? Grace of giving. Say it one more time. In this what? Grace of giving. I want you to write it down. If you're taking notes today, if you're not taking notes, I want you to write it down. I want to talk to you for a little bit about excelling in the grace of giving. Excelling in the grace of giving. And being able to live a life that excels in generosity. And I know some of you guys are guests with us today. And, and I hope you take this message and apply it to every area or whatever world that you live in today too. Because I think it's so important that you win in this area. I, I'm a very competitive person. Do I have any competitive people out there? Like, you got to win. Oh, you're, you're my people. I, I, know, I know you're watching me right there in, in Heights. Competitive people. I, I like to win. If I'm going to do a game, I'm going to win. Right. With my kids, we go to their little, you know, t-ball game, and they're like, nobody's keeping track of score. I'm keeping track of the score. <laughs> We're going to win this thing. I remember uh, early on, I mean, maybe our first year of marriage, Katie and I go to spend some time with her parents in North Georgia, and so we get out there, we're hanging out with them for a few days, and we do a game night one night. And they're like, hey, do you want to play Scrabble? I love Scrabble. I'm a preacher. Words are my thing. Let's do this thing. And now, now they're, they're very educated. They, they taught for years and years. So I'm like, this is going to be a good battle. I can't wait. So I'm ready. And I, I love Scrabble, love the game. So we sit down to start playing and get about 15, 20 minutes into the game. And my father-in-law throws a word down there at, on, the, on the board. And I'm looking at this word going, that's not a word. So I looked at him and said, hey, pause. I'm going to challenge that word. And they looked at me. They're like, what? You're going to do what? Katie looked at me. She's like, Aaron, you can't do that. I go, no, that's the point of Scrabble. You challenge people in the game. And, and so she's like, Aaron, but that's my dad. It's not nice. And then I had this moment. It, it, all, it, it just shocked me. I looked at them, and I looked at my father and mother-in-law, and I say, don't y'all play this game all the time? Oh, yeah, we play almost every night. And y'all don't challenge each other? No, we just kind of trust each other. What kind of family is this? <laughs> this doesn't make sense. If I'm going to play, I'm going to win this thing. It's how I do it. I'm competitive. Everything's about competition. There's baking competitions right now, and it's all who can bake. The fashion competition, it, it, you know, there's money competitions, there's singing competitions. Everything's about competitions. How many followers you got? It's all competitive right now. And if you're going to be in a world that's competitive, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you playing to win, but here's what I want to make sure. I want to make sure you're being competitive with what matters most. 
I want to make sure that as a church, that we're, we're, we're not competing with, with well, we want a better building or we want a better, you know, a better experience. No, no, no. I want to, I want to make sure that we're, we're excelling in faith and excelling in love and excelling in serving. Like we need to be a church that, that wins, but wins at what matters most. And I think there's a lot of people winning, but they're not winning at what matters most. And if Paul were to address us today, I think he would say, hey, if you want to be a Macedonian church, a church that makes a difference, excel in all of these areas, but make sure you excel in the grace of giving. Make sure you excel in generosity. And he uses this word five times in the Bible, in this passage, this word grace. How do we excel and grow in giving. You go, I'm already doing so much. I'm already going beyond what I even think I can do. How do you go beyond what you can do? you got to experience God's grace in your life. The grace that God uses to save you is also the grace that God gives you to grow in generosity. And I want to help you experience that grace today. Here's what grace is. Grace is divine assistance given to humans for their salvation and their sanctification. So it's not just I need God's grace to save me. I need God's grace to grow me into all that he's called me to be. And God has more in store for your life right now. There's greater things he wants to do through your life. And when you start experiencing the grace of God in your life, things change. Your, your lifestyle changes. The things you do change. You need to experience God's, God's grace in your life. And I pray that today, before you leave this service, you experience another level of God's grace in your life. And you see his work in your life. And, he, and the, oh, the natural overflow is this word, generosity. Generosity is the overflow of God's genuine work in your life. So when you, when you see the hand of grace on your life, the natural thing you should do is go, oh man, I got to do more. I got to give more. I got I to love more. I got to serve more. It's, it's a natural response to him. Because I don't know about you, but God's been good to me. Can I just say it again? I know they'll shout me down at other campuses, but, but God's been good to me. I didn't deserve my salvation, but by his grace, he gave it. I didn't deserve to be transformed, but he transformed me. I don't deserve that wife he gave me, but he gave it to me. I didn't deserve those kids. He gave it to me. And I'm just saying, we are all byproducts of the grace of God. So let's just eliminate this whole idea. I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. I, put, I, made it, I, I got myself out of this mess. You didn't get yourself out of anything. Let me tell you, you might have got yourself into it, but you can't get yourself out of it. It is but by the grace of God that we are where we are, that we have been become who we've become. Come on, it's his grace that saves us. And his grace is transforming us. And write it down this way, because when you understand what God has done to you, you can't help but let his goodness flow through you. So I just want you to understand, this is the idea. I just hope you get a fresh revelation of going, man, I want God to flow through me in new ways, greater ways. So I'm going I'm to do something today over the next few minutes that we have together. And I'm going to help you go to the next level when it comes to generosity in your life. Let me remind you at the beginning of this year, I gave you our word for 2021 and I'm already excited about our word for 2022. I've already got it. I already got it ready to go. I'll be preaching on it in January 2nd. But um, I'm not going to give you that word yet because I, I really feel like this word for 2021 was so pivotal to who we are as a church. And I want to finish the year reminding you of it. Yeah. Our word for 2021 was stretch. Yeah. That I believe that God would bring us into a year of stretching. Some of y'all are like, Pastor, why did you tell me that? That's, this been, it's been a stretching year. How many would say this year's been a little stretching? Come on, raise your hand. All over. All over. We've, we've all been stretched. But God doesn't stretch you to, to frustrate you and to, to break you. He stretches you to grow you. He, he knows there's more in you than you have seen already. He knows there's more potential and more greatness. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to stretch your, your even idea of what you think is possible through giving and walk in the generosity that God has for your life. And I call it the ladder of generosity, the ladder of the generous, because everybody's climbing a ladder. I just don't know if you're climbing the right ladder. A lot of you guys are climbing the corporate ladder and the, the social media ladder, and you got all these other ladders in your life. I want to talk to you about a ladder that God, I believe, would say is the most important ladder. It's the ladder of the generous. That when one day, when I'm 132 years old and they lay me to rest, at the back of the Britain Plaza somewhere. 
That I want to say, I want them to say what marked my life was he was totally surrendered to God and he was radically generous. That's what I want them to say. And I love my family and I was married the whole life, my whole life. It's the goals. So I want you to climb the generosity ladder and I'm going to stretch you with it today. The goal of all of this is at the top of this ladder is a life that's marked by generosity. So let's get up here. Now, if you guys knew your pastor, you would know that I am not a heights person. I do not do well at this, but I love you guys so much. There we go. Boom. The goal of this is to be generous, to walk in radical generosity in every area of your life, that your life would be marked by this. It's not, it's not building a 401k. It's not, oh, that's great. It's, it's not even having a nice house. Oh, this, I want you to have a nice house. I want you to have a nice boat. I want you to invite your pastor on your boat. <laughs> and that might be the word from God for somebody today. But, but I want you to, none of those things are bad, but just the goal of your life needs to be, I want to get to generosity. And so to get there, you have to break yourself out of what we all start with. And we all start with this world. And this is where it all starts. And it's called greed. It's greed. Because greed is where we all start. You go, well, well I'm, uh, I believe we're all born into this thing called sin. Yeah. And if you don't think greed is natural, go try to take a, a toy from a two-year-old. Yeah. It's, all, it's mine. It's mine. 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 It's the way we live. And we're all in this. We all start with greed. It's, it's our natural tendency is greed. It's not, it's not natural to be generous. You have to work towards generosity. But I want to just say this. Nothing in life that is of any value will come natural for you. You're going to have to fight it a little bit. You're going to have to expand a little bit. You have to be intentional with it. And so to get there, there's steps in your financial generosity that I want to challenge you with today. The first one is that you get to a place where you start to understand that God's done something big in your life, and you get to this place called the tip. So I talked about this in week one. Week one, it's just like, hey, God's been good to me. Here's 10 bucks. Now, I'm not, I'm not degrading that because that's a start. Because what that does is it breaks you out of greed and you go, I'm going to do something because I know God's been good to me. But here's the problem is that I know some of you guys, you've been attending church for now for four or five years. God's changed your life and you've stopped there. You've stopped being stretched and you've just made your life about a tip once in a while. Now, it's been a good week. I'll throw God a few extra bucks. But I don't know about you, I think God deserves more than just a little tip. Like, he deserves more than just a little bit. And then what I've challenged our church with during this season that we started just a few weeks ago is to move from a tip to move towards what we call percentage giving. Percentage giving is, is, is a game changer for your life. And what percentage giving is, is where you're going to go, I'm going to find a percentage that I can give to God. There we go, boom. And I'm going to give it to God. And when I give it to God, I'm going to make it automatic. And here's what's so important. I want you to get, to get this because this is where the tithing challenge starts. And I'm just so proud to say, church, I, you've blown my mind. I had a dream and from the very beginning of this series that 300 of our, of our church members would sit there and get the, get the passion and get the vision to go, you know what? I'm going to start percentage giving this series. I'm going to start it. And um, as of last week, we had just passed, not 300, we passed over 500 of you guys who said yes to God to this. And if you haven't done it yet, here's the, here's the, here's the QR code, and I want you to scan it. And it's right there on the screen. And I want you to take the 90-day tithing challenge where you're going to say, I'm going to start a percentage, and I'm going to give to God faithfully and watch what God does. And it might be a 2% or 3%, but you're going to start... And you're going to go, I'm going to become a percentage giver. You got the cards on your way in today. It'll be the last Sunday of this whole year that you get those cards. I want you to fill it out. And you'll get a book in the mail from me. You'll get um, an email with some instructions and some encouragement every single week. Because we want to help you in this thing of going, I'm putting God first on a regular basis. Make it a thing that stretches you. And watch how God will change your life. But don't stop there. Because some people get to the percentage and go, okay, I've done it. But there's actually a goal in this. And the goal is the tithe. The, go the goal is the tithe. Now, the tithe is super important. Here's what the, the tithe is. The tithe is we learned. Tithe is 10%. Tithe is soon. I, I got my percentage to where I'm honoring God with the first 10% of, our, of my income. Now, I've had people tell me, and they go, Aaron, I had no problem tithing when I was just making a couple hundred bucks a week. It's 20 bucks here, 30 bucks here. It's awesome. But, but Aaron, you don't understand. We make way too much money now. Like if we were to give 10%, that's way too much money. So here's my prayer for you. Here's my prayer for you. 
If you're one of those people who makes way too much money to give the 10%, then my prayer as your pastor is, God, would you reduce their income? <laughs> to, a, to, a, a, to a rate where they can actually be faithful and obedient to God. Because if God's blessed you and then you've now made it about how you can do life, it's, let the thing that you started with, let it be the thing that sustains you. And then go, no, this is part of who I am. I give to God. I honor him first. And by the way, obedience in the kingdom of God doesn't even really start till here. Until you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be obedient. I'm going to start tithing. I'm making faithful to God. And then, by the way, anything above here is generosity. People are like, I'm so generous. I give my tithe every week. That's not generosity. That's giving back to God what was already his. Generosity is when you have legacy Sundays and, and you see that missionary, you see that opportunity to give above and beyond. That's where generosity comes in. And in our church, we call that level of giving. And here's the next step, and this could be the challenge for somebody today. We call it spirit-led giving. Spirit-led giving is where we say, you know what, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God what he would have me to do. I think this is so, so crucial because I really believe there's a world where we could resolve every issue that's out there, every struggle, and it would happen because, first of all, the people of God tithe. And, and I want you to write it down this way because generosity has nothing to do with the amount that you give. Everybody gets this wrong. They go, well, I give so much money. Forget how much you're giving. Generosity has everything to do with the amount you give in proportion to your income. So you're not supposed to give like everybody else gives. You're supposed to give on, in proportion to how God has blessed your life. So I want us to live in such a way that we go, okay, I've got the percentage down now. In proportion to my income, how can I be a blessing to the world around us? How can I be a blessing? And there's some people, and I just want you to hear this. God has blessed you in supernatural ways where you just have the ability to make money. Some of you guys, you just, like everything you touch turns into gold. Like you're always just making so much money. And I want you to know this. When I see it throughout scripture, people with the gift of earning almost always have the gift of giving. God did not give you the gift of earning so that you could have a better house than everybody else. And I'm all about a better house. I'm all about a nicer car. It's great, but that's not the purpose of it. What's the purpose of your generosity? The purpose of your generosity is so that you can get to spirit-led giving. So that you can now, you've given your tithe, and now you can pray and say, God, what would you have us do? And if you're a spouse and you're married, I would ask you and your spouse, both of y'all pray, and then both of y'all write down a number. And whoever's got the bigger number, that's the more spiritual person, and that's the one you're obedient to. <laughs> So here's three questions I want to ask you. And we're gonna, it's, it's quick, but I want you to get this. First of all, when you look at this ladder, here's the question I want to ask you is where do I stand on the generosity ladder? Where do I stand right now in my life? You're going, well, Aaron, I'm making, you know, 10 bucks an hour. I'm, you know, at, you know, at a restaurant. I'm doing this thing. I, I don't have a lot to give. Remember, it's not about how much you give. It's about how much you give in proportion to how God's blessed your life. What's your income? So just where are you at with this? And then here's the second question I want you to ask is what's the reason behind my current standing on the generosity ladder? So if you live at the, the tip level or you live at the percentage level that's a below the tithe, then my question is, is why? Why is it? And I think there's some reasons. I think you need to be honest about the reasons that, that you're at the place that you're at now. Again, so that you can excel in giving, so that we can be a Macedonian church that makes an impact in seasons of trial. So, so how do, why are you in, at, at this level? I think there's four reasons people don't move up the ladder. And here's the first one is because they really like discipline. Because the discipline really is, is going, do I really want to make sure I get my finances in order so that I can be radically generous? Like you got to figure out, you got to get some discipline in your life. Here's the other one is that you just lack faith or trust. Because every time, <laughs> this is this. What I've done is God's blessed my life, and every time he's blessed my life, I move up the ladder. And I go, I just trust God. He's done so much. And then you start to believe God. You gave a huge amount. And for, for you, like it was a big stretch for you last year in legacy offering. And then, and then something happens, and you go, it's good here. It's good here. And then God blesses you. Like, you hear the message again today? Like, all right, all right. Y'all are getting a lot of work out going up and down this ladder. And you get real, real generous, and then all of a sudden, oh, man, oh, the stock market messed up again. <laughs> Do you really trust God? Do you really trust God? And, and for me in my life, what I've decided is I'm never going to live below this. 
and then I'm always going to aim for this in my life. And I'm going to continually pray to say, I'm going to be a blessing to the world around me. Here's the third thing, is, is you have a lack of understanding about eternity. If we really knew that eternity is real and heaven and hell are realities, then our finances would prove it. And we would always be praying, going, God, what do you have me to do? You've given me abundance. What do I need for that? What do I need to do about it? Uh, Rick Warren says it this way. When you live in light of eternity, your values change. So I, I never go below the tithe, and I'm always aimed for spirit-led generosity. Just going, God, what's the need? I would have, you would have me meet today. Who's the person? Who's, who's the person on the side of the street? Who's the person in the grocery store? What's the missionary I can reach out to? I just want us, the, the issues in our world would be resolved if the people of God led, live through spirit-led generosity. And the last, last one is just simply this, is that we lack an understanding of the love of God. Because if we really knew how much God loved us, we would live our whole life just going, I'm just, I'm so blessed. He's, he's blessed me so much. Philemon says it this way, I am praying that you will put into action the generosity that comes from your faith as you understand and experience all the good things we have in Christ. Did you see those two words right there? If you underline right there, I want you to underline them in your notes. Understand and experience. Every time you understand something new about God, you should be climbing the ladder of generosity. Because I'm, I'm, I'm realizing he's greater than I think he is. He's better than I think he is. Uh, when I experience the favor of God, I got that bonus, or I get that promotion, or, or he, uh, you know, I thought it would be $500 to fix a car, it ended up being $150. I know that's a miracle. I'm going to climb the ladder of generosity. I'm going to figure out a way to bless someone else. I'm just going to live this way. And, and write it down in your notes, because our giving should always be motivated by love. Always. Our, our giving at Radiant Church is never motivated by guilt. That's why I just think guilt is a terrible motivator. Because you, if you feel your way into it, you'll feel your way out of it. So my motivation for being a spirit-led giver is simply that I just am so overwhelmed by the love of God. He's done so much to me, so much in me. And I just got to bless people through it. Uh, write it down this way. Because God loved us, what did he do? He gave. What was the motivation of him giving his son? He loved us so much. By the way, if you don't have a relationship with God, you can today. He loves you so much that he gave his son for you. He gave you his spirit that's drawing you to him. He gave you that family that invited you to church. That's a big deal. God loved us so much he gave. And here's the other thing is that because we love him, guess what we do? We give. We give. I just think it's so crucial that you live a life where you're walking in radical generosity and it marks who you are. And if you're a family, make it a part of your life and going, hey, as a family, how are we going to climb this ladder? How are we going to continually be spirit-led givers? Watch how you train your kids to go, hey, how can we bless someone today? Let's all be praying to just see who God puts in our path today. Who's that family member that we can help? And you guys are that church because I get the messages all the time. Hey, God's blessed me. Who can I bless? Hey, who's in need right now? What's a missionary that we can do? We do it all the time because you guys are this church. All right, so here's the last part. Ready? We're going to close it out. Here's the third question is what steps do I need to take to move up the ladder and excel in giving? Now, I'm being weird. It's not, not that weird message. I just want you to know, and where you're at in your life now, what do you, what's the step you need to take to move up that ladder? And, and I want to challenge you, especially if you're, if you're not giving at all, I want to challenge you to just move. Move up the ladder. Move up the ladder for a percentage and say, I'm going to make it automatic. And even right now, you can fill out that 90-day tithing challenge card. We're not, we're not even going to pass the bucket to Like, we don't do that anymore. COVID kind of killed that idea. So just, just on the way out, you'll be able to drop them in the bins on the way out and just say, I'm going to move up the ladder. I'm going to start this way. Here's three things that we can we, we do that will help you move up the ladder. And I just wanted to give you these, and we're going to close. Number one, you got to learn to fall in love with being debt-free. Can I just challenge the church today? Let me tell you, if we're going to be the Macedonian church where we're spirit-led, some of you guys, you, you are spirit-led, but you have nothing to give. And you're like, well, like everything else, I'll just swipe for it. <laughs> you got you to fall in love with getting debt-free. By the way, part of that is that you just got to understand that the world is working overtime on getting you to purchase more and more stuff. Can I just tell you, you don't need whatever is in that Amazon cart. That is the word from God for somebody right now. Let me say it again for somebody right there. You're sitting next to your spouse and you're elbowing them right now. You don't need what's in the cart. Just delete it out of your cart right now. Your kids, your, the kids don't need that many presents. Let me tell you, as a guy who has five of them, 
I'm like, we're like, listen, they, they unwrap one, they go, where's the next one? No, 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 no. You get a couple this year. That's it. They don't need that much. You know, you see over 8,000 ads a day. 8,000. This stat was for 2017, four years ago, that stat was 4,000. Double in four years. The world is onslaught. You need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. And by the way, none of it will satisfy you. So stop going into debt for things that will stop not satisfy you. Like work hard. Get in 2022, make it a decision to go, I'm getting out of debt. This is, when Katie and I got married, uh, we had a little bit of car, uh, car payment, and then we had a uh, college loans. And we made it a point that we're going to live in such a way, we never went below our tithe, but we're going to live with anything we have extra, we're going to knock it out. And now we live with zero debt other than our mortgage, and we're able to be spirit-led givers at all times. Whatever God says, we can do it. Why? Because we've, we've unstrapped ourselves from the bondage of debt. Make it a point and get in a little Dave Ramsey class. Get, a, get in a group in, in, the, in this ring. Make it a point to get out of debt. And watch how God will be able to use your life to walk with generosity. You can't be radically generous and in debt at the same time. It's just, it's, it, they contri- they, they're, they're, in, they're in odds with each other. Number two is you got to fall in love with the vision of Radiant. That God has given Radiant. God's given our church supernatural vision. By the way, we're going to Clearwater in January. You want to talk about a hard area to plant a campus at? Clearwater. How many know that area needs Jesus? That area needs some strongholds broken. That area needs a life-giving, spirit-filled church. It needs radiant there. We got lots of vision. We're continuing to expand in our radiant college. All of those things. It's such an exciting time. We've had over 700 baptisms this year alone in our church. To God be the glory. We're going to give over a million dollars away to missions next year. You're an exciting time. This is the, it might be a time that people are struggling all over the world. Your church is thriving during this time. Fall in love with the vision of what God's doing in this church. And number three, just fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Make it your priority. I'm not in love with giving. I'm in love with Jesus. And the result of my love for Jesus is that I give. I know some people, they're philanthropists. They're in love with giving. I'm not in love with giving. I'm in love with Jesus. And my love for Jesus makes me want to just keep going up and up the ladder so I can be life that's radically generous. Can we ask the Lord what he would have you to do today? Just close your eyes at every campus right now and just say, God, reveal to me where I'm at on the ladder. Come on, ask him. Holy Spirit, speak to us. And whatever God tells you during this moment, do it. Whatever he tells you. Some of you guys, you're, you've stopped at a certain level. And God's saying, no, it's time to go up the ladder. Time to go to the next level. Some of you, this is your moment to pray and ask God what he would have you do for legacy. Say, God, let me live a life of radical generosity. Well, I'm a college student. Start now. Live a life of radical generosity. And watch how we become more and more like him when we give. God, we're going to be obedient to whatever you tell us to do with our lives. Let us live a life where at the end of this whole thing, we made an impact for eternity. God, I want our church to be a Macedonian church. That in a time of extreme trials, we're able to excel in the grace of giving. Lord, we're able to give more to missions and more to outreach and launch campuses. And people look back and go, how did you do that? It was but God's grace through the generosity of the church. Lord, let us be that church. Let us be faithful to you. Every eye closed, every head bowed. There's one more group that's here today and you don't have a relationship with God. I want you to know you can right now. You might not have started right, but let me tell you, this thing can end right. And you might have wandered away. I want you to know, for God so loved the world that he gave. He gave, he was generous, and he's offering you another chance. Some of you, you've blown it one, two, three, 20 times. But God's saying, if you come to me right now, he'll give you a fresh start. If that's you today, you're away from God, but you want to restart, or you want to start that relationship with him today. This is your moment to say yes to Jesus. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to respond by throwing that hand up, waving it at me, and go, today's my day, Aaron. It's my day of salvation. It's my day to accept the grace of God to save me, the grace of God to change me. I've tried it on my own. I need God to do it through me. That's you today. You're ready to give Jesus your life. On the count of three at every campus, raise a hand. Ready? One, two, three. Throw those hands up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you at North Tampa. Thank you at Brandon. Thank you at the Heights. Thank you in the back there. Thank you. Thank you at St. Pete. Thank you online. Just throw that hand and put it right back down. Let's all pray this prayer out loud together. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Forgive me in my past. 
my present, and my future. For the rest of my life, I'm going to follow you. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, come on, let's celebrate. Dozens of lives that were just changed right now.